Binary Jazz, a podcast. I am joined by my pals, uh, Allison, a bit further north, a uh, snow shovel sharpener from the Arctic Tundra, and uh, Chris, a uh, pine cone farmer from the uh, sub Saharan plains of Utah. That is a true fact, though. We do get lots of pine cones because we have a pine tree in our. On our property. What, what really fascinates me is how they migrate across the desert. Pine cones? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured like a herd of pine cones. <laughs> oh no, they're 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 very individual. Plodding, making yeah. making their way. You've seen the boulders though that migrate across the desert, right? Mm-hmm. They leave like sand. How does that work? Wind. Boulder dash. No. Huh. So this is the Balderdash of Podcasts, <laughs> um, where we talk about a topic we know nothing about until the end of the episode, and uh, like on occasion stumble across the, uh, the true meaning of love. Love, life, the universe, and everything. Yeah. Universe, space, pretty big. Space, pretty. I just, I don't know that I can handle intros. Let me be quite <laughs> frank about things. I'm grateful I don't do intros. <laughs> I, see, I wish I'd prepared something. I, just, but that's how I feel I about the topic every week. I wish I had prepared oh, well. something. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be the title of my autobiography. I wish I'd prepared something. <laughs> I yeah. wish I knew what was happening. Yeah, oh, no, sadly, I, <laughs> sadly, I often realize what's happening. Like, it, it, there's just nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another, that's another good potential title. There's just nothing I can do about it. There's just nothing I can do about it. <laughs> this show got dark pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of what's happening. I just can't do anything to control it. Yeah. General good life vibes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it's like, it's all small stuff, man. I don't know, you cut out there. It's all small stuff. Man. Man. <laughs> so what's today's topic? <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I like the awkward intro. I think it, I think we were going doing pretty good. We we're we we're almost reaching peak awkwardness. We don't want to hit peak awkwardness too soon. We have to have goals. <laughs> to have goals. Peak awkwardness. We have to have something to work up. You're to. in the wrong podcast. <laughs> we have. You're listening to. I guess you're in it as well. I keep discovering more people who are quietly listening in my life but not letting me know until then they'll reference something and I have no idea what they're talking about. They're oh, like, you know, no. on, the, on the episode where you reference, like when Chris was talking about home improvement and I was like, what? You're listening? People are listening? <laughs> I haven't looked at the stats in a really long time, so. I'm gonna end up at Thanksgiving dinner and be stumped for the second time on a topic. Like, hey, do you know what Dyson Sphere is? I'm pretty sure it's a thing. Of, like it's a circular thing of meat. No, it has nothing to do with you're, meat. You're really going to be bringing a Dyson sphere to your family Thanksgiving, right? Like, I, wish, I totally sure. Already, well, Thanksgiving here already passed, so unless I celebrate with like some sort of vegetarian mishmash of a Dyson sphere, <laughs> I'm not even sure how that would function. I don't know. Because you eat roast vegetables, like this. Yeah, but like for it to hold its shape at the scale that a Dyson sphere would need to be, because like if, if we're thinking a Dyson sphere is like this big, like head head sized, I mean, because head sized is like 
if a piece of meat is the size of your head, the size and shape of your head, it's pretty gross. And that's pretty much the idea of a Dyson sphere, right? So, so a head size clump, a head size clump of like, I don't know, blended vegetables pro probably would fall apart. You need to have something to, to stick it all together. Binder, yeah. yeah. Well, I think the vegetarian version would need to be like a stuffed gourd of some sort or like Ooh. a squash. Something to oh, like. That actually, that actually sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> what what a Dyson sphere you would you know like Euro meat is on like the spindle yeah. you slice it off that's really what you need for a Dyson sphere yeah some sort of You'd like a permanently spinning spindle there's um a vegan deli here called yam chops that um I feel like they would oh my they, God, I love that. they would be into that idea I feel like but I don't know if I can sell them on the Dyson sphere. <laughs> I, I'm just imagining this conversation like you walk in, like, so I have this podcast, right? And um, we have this recurring topic of the Dyson sphere, which in reality is like a big old thing of meat. But I think that people would really be excited about a basketball size, like yeah. thing of vegetables that you could just, you know, sort of like throw on a spindle and slice off pieces <laughs> as people order. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> Allison, by the way. <laughs> Thoughts. Yeah. By the way, I just walked in off the street. <laughs> I would also, also like what's your Wi-Fi password? <laughs> I would also like some fake chicken salad. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about lunch now. I'm thinking I'm about in. I'm thinking about those IKEA veggie balls. Oh. Have you had those? No. I'm guessing not, because that was an uh like a you've never had them. Um mm. Yeah, because we have an Ikea that's not so far away that we don't go there um, too much. Um, I mean, it's about a half hour away. Um, and, and we discovered they have these, these veggie balls. I can't, it's, I can't remember what they're called. But they're different than the meatballs? Like different yeah, than? Well, because they're veggies. Well, <laughs> but like, <laughs> but are, yes. do they serve them with the same idea? I, that I think so um yeah I, th I think so uh that they're like but i mean we use them in things that need veggie balls and, and they're they're pretty darn good actually that's good i think that's a safe distance for an ikea to be just far enough that you have to put some effort in to get yeah. there because if it's I too close then you're gonna be there day. way too yeah every single day i pass one. Oh really wow i mean maybe not every day but it's on the way to the kids school so mm. Ooh, it got windy all of a sudden. So you could just be like, I need a spatula for a dollar. Like, <laughs> it's the problem a really with awkward is, is spatula. Worth, yeah, a spatula with a strange name that's almost like the right dimensions and feel for a dollar. And I want to like walk a mile and a half to get it. We the actually, walk? the last time sure. we went, the last time we went to Ikea, we actually got um, a spatula. And because the other one, I, I you know, burned the handle. Um, so it's all melty. <laughs> um, so I thought it would be a good thing to get a new one so that like the toxic uh, rubber stuff isn't coming off on the hand every time I use it. Um, and, and so yeah, I was like, oh yeah, it's fine. It's a spatula. It's, they're all the same, right? It's not because it's Ikea. So it's like basically completely straight with like no dip for where, you know, to like flip like things. Right. Um, and I, I realized as I'm making pancakes, oh, this is really awkward. This is that's a key part of I'm burning this. my knuckles on the griddle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Thanks, Ikea. Yep. Yep. I'm really the company that has let all. Americans say that's good enough. That's good. This really? is all right. Ikea was that? Yes. Like fast food. Fast food. <laughs> I mean McDonald's was like I, I mean technically I've been fed. Like that's that's <laughs> That's, that's but that's, that's McDonald's. Like, See that right there. That's McDonald's. Technically, I've been fed. That's fast. That's food. like that's totally under the umbrella of like this is good enough. I mean, like I feel like McDonald's is the root of that whole idea. Like probably here it is. Like convenience is all that matters. But that like no convenience well, is all that matters is Seven <laughs> Eleven. What was last time I went to a Seven Eleven? I don't even know where there is one around here. Do you have uh oh what's the stupid East Coast uh version? Wawa? Yeah. Do you have Wawa's we do not. instead? There was one being built like nine tenths of a mile from my house. 
Huh. Uh, the local gas station I would go to um, closed. So now to get gas, I need to go, I mean, maybe a mile and a half. So it's super inconvenient, obviously. <clears throat> so I think when the Wawa opens, I'll probably go there for gas a lot. I don't know that I'll do much more than that. I'm not sure that I can get on board with like being excited about gas stations. They are more deluxe than I imagined them to be from their initial description. Yeah, no, it's true. Uh, when we went to, uh, I guess it was the Poconos, right? Um, for, uh, for the web dev retreat, however many years ago that was, uh, when, Two. <laughs> when Allison's eye blew up. Um, <laughs> Good times. It's it's a long story. We don't need to get into it on the show. <laughs> um, October's of years past. Yeah. Huh. Um, we there was a Wawa. We really know how to do Halloween. Yeah, there was a Wawa uh, that we went to for coffee, and yeah, it, if if it's if what you're thinking of is Seven Eleven, this is like the Starbucks. Well, no, not the, the Starbucks is not a good example. Um, this is like the gourmet coffee house of 7-Elevens. It's like really sort of posh for a 7-Eleven and the coffee's actually good, like legitimately good coffee. And, and I'm a fairly big coffee snob and it was, it was, and not only that, but they had a variety of, uh, milk and non-milk yeah. alternatives um, to put in your coffee, which is something that is completely unheard of outside of like Starbucks or an actual coffee house. Like I've never gone somewhere and been like, oh, you've got almond milk and coconut milk and uh, soy milk and non-dairy creamer and milk of varying percentages. And it wasn't something that you had to like really track down. like behind the counter or anything. It was just right. like out there. I was like, oh, I can buy gasoline and just ask for almond milk and it's readily available. That's just- I totally forgot about the gas part. <laughs> well, yeah, I wasn't, um. I wasn't relevant to me, but I was still just like, what a one-stop shop. Yeah. And I can also oh, like- Oh, they have gas here? Buy a banana and like- I wonder if I'll ever go inside it. I would so recommend- you should. you should just do it. Just do a lap though. You don't yeah. like, it's not like- well, go, go in and get coffee. Yeah. They have different roasts. I don't know. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was a bunch I, of different roasts. I don't know if my bar is just really low, but no, it was. And especially <laughs> since the day before we didn't go to the Wawa or I didn't go to the Wawa and I had the coffee at the resort and that was horrible, like awful. And then go to, go to Wawa and have coffee. And it's like, Oh my God, this is actually good. <sighs> so delicious. At, you said that I was thinking of coffee at our, company retreat uh, back in February, the place we were staying at, like didn't understand, I guess, our, who we are and our consumption of coffee. Because <laughs> they had this one little table set up for, I don't know, 70 of us, right, to go and get coffee. And they had two coffee pitchers and like a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cream. And the line, I mean, it was just like, there was one dude that, poor dude was just running back and forth, just bringing like pots. Like <laughs> morning sessions were going on, people were still in line, like, that's cool but I need my coffee first, right? Um, yeah. I, they didn't really get it either. Like it didn't really get better. They want to get it. They too, like, did, did no one learn anything yesterday? <laughs> they didn't see, ramp it up. <laughs> see, our, um, our retreat was in a castle in Italy and um, below, yeah, on, yeah, in the ground, on the ground level, we actually had um, adjacent or attached into the structure was a coffee house, a cafe. Um, and we just had an open tab. We had an open tab with them and they had an open tab with a, uh, a wine bar down the street. And so we just, we'd go down there and get, get uh, espresso, cappuccino, whatever people wanted. Yeah. That's so, amazing. So That's how I'm gonna run my next retreat for myself. That was, that was good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee shop up the street. I'm just gonna be like, I'm having a retreat here. I'd like to open a tab. <laughs> it is just me. <laughs> this is the day so one of my retreat. Put out of my tab. Yeah. You need to write yes. by me first. Don't let that person over in the corner add to my tab because they're not part of this retreat. <laughs> Same with muffins. No excessive muffin eating. <laughs> no baked goods. Just me. <laughs> Uh, 
I didn't know. I wouldn't have considered you a coffee snob, Chris. I wouldn't have. I worked at Whole Foods. Uh, I worked in specialty department, which is coffee, chocolate, and cheese. Um, I became oh a co- I became a coffee I snob. I want a new job. I became a coffee snob after working with coffee, chocolate, and cheese. Um, we mostly just because I, I learned more about it, and and then we went to a local roaster, um, and they we did a cupping of different uh, things they had. So um, I began to start to notice the differences between different roasts and single origin versus um, blends and, and whatnot. So, and, and know a little bit about the history of like, you know, where, or, or not just the history, but like how coffee comes in, what happens in the, in the production process, all that sort of stuff. So do you find as a result of that, that you drink coffee many different ways now? Like you're not like a, I take my coffee with X amount of cream and sugar or whatever. Or do you find that you're still pretty regimented in your coffee? I'm fairly regimented in my coffee. Um, I, the biggest thing, um, I mean, when I go, I, I don't, I don't tend to drink it black. I can drink it black, but I don't like, I don't like it as much. Although I know that when I'm not drinking it black, I don't taste it as, as well as I would if I was drinking it black. Um, but, you know, and then when I was in Italy, I just, I, because I didn't want to deal with milk, I just said un cafe and gotten this shot of espresso. And that was what I did because it's the same amount of coffee and a tiny little thing. Um, or actually more, co- uh, yeah, uh, possibly, arguably, potentially more caffeine. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, but I mostly, I still do the same thing. When I go to, when I go out to like a Starbucks or something, I don't actually get coffee usually because I think they do, I think they've gotten better lately, but there's sometimes like cross contamination of milks with their, I think their steamer. So like, especially like we only ever go to Starbucks on road trips. Um, so I'll end up like, we'll go to the Starbucks and then like an hour later, my stomach will start hurting and I still have like four hours to go on the road trip. And that's not a good feeling. So I just get chai (laughs) with, with, uh, probably steamed, uh, milk of some kind, which is not really avoiding the problem at all. (laughs) Um, I, uh, I'm a, uh, whirling dervish coffee drinker. Like I'll take it any way you want to give it to me. <laughs> if there's coffee involved, you will say yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't drink, I wouldn't say I drink a lot of coffee, but I definitely vary my coffee intake and I call it quits right at noon on coffee. No, yeah, I, 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 I need to sleep at night. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Does caffeine keep I, you up I, or no? I had no, I had far too much Jolt Cola as, as a, as a young teen. And I, I, it doesn't, I mean, it, it makes me a little bit more awake if I have it at night, but it doesn't keep me from sleeping. I always sleep through anything, including. I had a lot of Jolt Cola Cola. somewhere along the way, something changed. Cause now if I have caffeine, like after 2 PM, like I will lay in bed until 3 AM totally awake. Mm -hmm. So not great. No, I try to have. But I can a, also sleep in the morning after a cup of coffee. I can grab a nap and wake up like refreshed. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's when I'm like seventy, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna like be the guy that sleeps like in ten minute increments all day long, <laughs> but not at night. Well, that's like I mean, like the idea of a power nap. Are you refreshed? Can you like grab a power nap and then feel like awake afterwards? Or are you still groggy? Uh, as long as it's not too long, yeah, I can wake up and feel refreshed. If it, if I hit like an hour on it though, I wake up and be like, where the hell am I? Too much. Yeah. I can't do the power nap thing. I've seen, I've seen my dad do it successfully for many, many years, but I did not inherit that genetic, that genetic trait. Of, so your dad is Rip Van Winkle? Yep. He does this, he, he, can, he can, first of all, he can fall asleep anywhere. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> it's a good skill to have, I think, by choice. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I can't do the like 30 minute power nap. I tend to like, I'll just be too groggy. It doesn't sync up with whatever sleep phases I have going on. See, oftentimes, and especially when it's not a time that my body is, is used to sleeping, um, it will take me a half hour to get to sleep, which then yeah. defeats the purpose of the power nap. Yeah. I'm eating up way too yeah. much time at that point. Cause my brain is just like, no, no, it's, you're not going to sleep right now. Yeah. So some of my favorite naps have been on Sunday afternoon with golf on TV. <laughs> um, usually, well, usually like holding a baby, right? Like that, 
sort of upright, sort of in and out sleep is pretty amazing. As a non-parent, that baffles me because I feel like I'm very much the person that's on edge if I am in, if I'm the caretaker of a baby. So I can't imagine being like, like falling asleep, <laughs> even though like I totally get why that's possible because it's like. They're, calm. they're just giant heaters. A calm entity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in my head, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not the calm entity in that situation. <laughs> I am the, like, I, I have been entrusted with this, this ball of warmth. I can't fall asleep. <laughs> I've had two um, occasions in, oh, turtles. <laughs> I've had two occasions. <laughs> Sorry. I've had two At least they're not two big boulders, but I guess they kind of are. <laughs> They, I mean, they are literally they what like, turtles really? are. I mean, by definition, that's what the word turtle means. Turtle, Low really? Boulder. Yes, absolutely. Huh. Okay. So is that our topic? That's our topic for this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had occasion twice in the last uh, couple weeks to uh, take the seven month old on like a like a, she needs a nap, but there's not really a good spot, so just carry my arms and like wander through like down a trail, and that is a very relaxing way to wander down a trail hiking i guess if you were really like being efficient about the way you move but i was just wandering following meandering yeah oh i also so love the, oh. i love <laughs> i love the sense you said of some of my favorite naps which i was just like i like that topic it's like oh favorite naps. <laughs> it's like a top very, five favorite naps <laughs> top five favorite naps or just i feel like so many sunbeams and like m moments of remembrances of naps where I'm like, oh, that was a good nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I might spend the afternoon thinking about some of my favorite naps. Okay. Just reminiscing on naps. That doesn't <laughs> sound like a waste of time at all. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think it is. <laughs> that is not the topic for today. That is not favorite, the topic. favorite naps naps is not the topic. The topic this week is Aglet. Adlet. A-G-L-E-T. It's the end of a uh, shoelace. Ah. And Phineas and Ferb had an episode on that. So. I know. I was yeah. banking on you not having seen that. Oh, well, come on. Uh, Gary definitely watches Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of the kids' shows that my children have run across, when they're like, can you watch TV? I'm like, yeah, are you watching Phineas and Ferb? <laughs> I, it's clever. I like it. It's, I feel like it has the humor of like a Futurama or, um, well, the Simpsons or, I mean, you know, but without any questionable content, I'm a fan. It's, it's wholesome and silly and sometimes really funny. And you've clearly learned things from it. And now, now what? Now where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> Next week's topic. <laughs> Next week's topic? No, like I'm that prepared. Come on. <laughs> so, so uh, did you know of Aglet because of Phineas and Ferb? No. Okay. Although I discovered it, that that episode due to my, re my extensive research based on, but also did you know that there's like decorative Aglets? For like military, they're yeah. called. Something. You know, I think I did know that actually, and I think that it's um, it's a lot more like braided rope, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's that's um. So like, wh was there a world of lace shoes prior to aglets, like where people yes. just like, oh god, my lace is frayed again, and. <laughs> It's made with cotton, so I can't use like a lighter to make it fuse together. So I'm just hosed, right? And then someone was like, "Wait, I have an idea." Like, like yes. Although yeah. I think that Jennifer Aglet, she was like, "I've got you. Hold on, <laughs> check this out." <laughs> One moment, I've got a solution. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put some tape around the end of it. And then everyone was like, "Wow, your shoelaces are so not frayed." <laughs> And that's how it stuck. The story of Jennifer Aglet. The story of Jennifer. I don't know if there's, I didn't come across anybody who would be credited, but I wish I had. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a last name, actually. It sounds like. Well, it's based off of um, the French word for needle. That I know. Ah. 
Well, and the and yeah. the holes the holes that it would go through are called eyelets, aren't they? I think so. Yeah. So you get the aglet, and you put the aglet through the eyelet. Um, We're just going to be seam seamsters and seamstresses at the end of this. Or as the French say, aglet. I, <laughs> I need to do some sewing. I have to sew some patches on the kids' Cub Scout uniforms. Oh, Maybe that that sounds like a fun project. I just keep thinking, like, you know, some evening I'll, I'll do that instead of watch TV. But that evening hasn't happened yet. Maybe tonight. Well, that's because I, I always think that's what I'm going to do. And then I realize it's a really poor decision for me to be doing anything with, like, needles and thread in dim lighting at night when... Yeah, that's my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> it just ends up being a poor decision because I end up dropping things where they shouldn't be dropped. <laughs> yeah. It's a bright day, um, time. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow during the day. But what, do they already have badges? Or are they like the, um, the, like the troop number patches? And yeah, the, the troop number. Um, yeah, that's the only one that I need to put on as a troop number. When we got the shirts that came with like the I have some other crap on it. I don't know. <laughs> I should know what the other stuff is. You really should. Um, it like it's um, the it's not called the region, but um, it's effectively the region. Like this regional patch that your troop member goes underneath, so you can identify like if there were two troops, troop four or whatever, right? Um, you would need to know. Um, you still have your alliance of like the the overarching umbrella where you're like we're still part of the same team you and me same. yeah i was gonna say province and then you, not in the province <laughs> no and you wouldn't confuse like troop four with troop um troop four in northeast florida with troop four you know southeast georgia that would be, that would be the last confusion you would want on your hands <laughs> oh my gosh two, two rival groups potentially getting along <laughs> yeah who do you think you are? Jeez. Attending the same jamboree? Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> I think that there's a jamboree coming up um, in November. So Probably. there's that. Kind of, I, yeah. I was always so like jealous of all the jamborees my brother got to go to. I felt like the Girl Scout jamborees were less than thrilling when I, when I was growing up. Things have changed, but... I'm, I never did scouts of any kind. I didn't, uh, I really opted out, I think a little early on, but I think it, I think it, it's it all has to do with like your local group as well and how they wrangle things. And my local group was less than a good match for who I was at the time. I didn't I did. enjoy the way I expressed myself. <laughs> I did intramural sports. I did sports of all kinds instead. As always. All times. Yeah, well, baseball and basketball. And I did flag football for a year. Oh, oh flag football. I totally forgot about flag football. Wow. <laughs> flag football is how I broke my arm. Oh. Not, not actually in a game, though. After practice, my very large African American friend <laughs> did a diving tackle. <laughs> Ah, after a game. Uh, no, after after practice, after practice, oh. at the end of practice, I, I, and I happen to be like holding the ball, I think, and just sort of staring off into nothing. And and he, and then I turn and look, and I see him literally flying through the air. And the next thing I know, my arm is broken. And you're like, and that's why it's flag football. Yes. <laughs> and now I'm in a cast. Please. please well, it was up here, so they couldn't put a cast. I had to just be in a sling and not move it. Oh, that's. I had this, uh, I had this like sort of compound fracture thing where the where the bone went. That's the pits. Gross. I have um, managed to hit the timer, even though you all knew what the topic was. Yeah. Well, I didn't, but wow. Gary spoiled it for me. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. I'll but blame Phineas and Ferb, not you. That's fine. Yeah, but you knew the song, which is also nice. Well, I'll yeah. try to I, I promised myself when we started the show that I would never sing on camera, but here we are. A G L E T. <laughs> it's um, I, I will say like you should you should probably watch that episode. Uh -huh. It's it's worth it. It's worth a view. It's it's endearing. 
I mean, you probably won't go, oh, I need to watch the rest of Phineas and Ferb, but that episode's pretty enjoyable. <laughs> I've watched a couple Phineas and Ferb. Um, I didn't have too many objections to it. I didn't have too many. And that's a solid review from Chris, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are other things that, that possibly, I just, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of sort of, it's very much from a male point of view. Um, and that comes out in a variety of different ways. Um, but not anything like overt, just like it's written by, it's obviously written by men. It's, it's starring two male lead, lead characters. All the female characters are basically background. Um, and, and that's just, you know, how everything sort of rolls. And they're the most interesting and cool characters that everybody wants to be like. Um, so it's just sort of celebrating that, which, which was the main, main critique that I had. Is it on, oh, is it on Nickelodeon? What channel? Yeah. yeah, it's a Nick. I think the, the counterpoint to that, though, is it, it is uh, an advance in, in animated shows and that it's like a, it's a mixed family right right I mean, yep yep no there's definitely there's definitely and, right yeah. right no there's definitely good points to it. it it deals with um uh siblings who are not like blood related uh in like that's the first time i've ever seen anything like that so there's definitely good parts to it but but yeah um um i would also say that um what's her name the, I, I i think some of the lead i think i think you should give it another viewing in between midnight and six, yeah, pick up right, some more exactly. kids programming. Yeah. <laughs> we watched um, a, a friend. A friend of my son recommended uh, a an anime called Fairy Tale. Uh, so we watched that last night with the kids, um, and the essential like. I mean, it's basically like a world of wizards and magic and stuff, and and except it's anime, um, and so the setup is fairly mundane, um, and the lead, the main character is a girl who wants to join this guild. The guild is called Fairy Tale. It's where all the really cool wizards go, um, and the guild is called Fairy Tale, which is weird, um, and but she's constantly like basically her character is there to advance the male the male characters around her's plots in various ways um and there's lots and lots of fan service um like not like overt like revealing necessarily but like ridiculously disproportionate uh body parts i should say uh and um and yeah, just really like the, the female characters don't have any purpose other than to advance the males around them. Um, and Aaron and I were having this conversation last night and just like, this is really like, why is this an okay thing? And like, the thing is like, there's whole other genres of anime that are basically written for and primarily about girls and women that never suffer from that problem. It's only the ones that are obviously directed toward boys and men that have all the really horrible body stuff. And like, so obviously it can be done and you know you're watching one when you're watching one because they, it doesn't have that. Everything that is written for, for, for the male contingent is always doing that constantly. And it's really frustrating because it, like, it sort of ruins what could otherwise potentially be an okay thing to watch. It's true. And the, the fact that you know it's possible is really frustrating. It's really frustrating, yeah. Especially once it's overtly noticeable. You're yeah. like, oh look, the absence of this is, is a fabulous thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's um, uh, a show on Netflix called, is it Hilda? What was I watching? I might have to get back to you on this. <laughs> <laughs> I might be making up the name, Hilda. But um, I only watched the first episode or two, but it's an animated thing about this. I don't know. It's like a purple-haired heroine type who just like fights ogres and I don't know. I'm into it so far. <laughs> There's we like watched... not not in-depth plot points, but it's like the kind of like fluffy animation where I'm just like I'm enjoying this. I don't know who the target audience is. <laughs> I don't know if I am the target audience, but you popped up on my algorithm and Netflix, you know me. <laughs> we, we recently finished Disenchanted, which is Matt Groening's uh, new- I just started that. Series. Yeah. 
Um, so, and that was really good. And now we're in, and like, we're thinking like, okay, so that has questionable like subject matter. Um, but I still <laughs> think it's better than the fan service, like right. to watch with our kids, even though like it's talking about sex and drinking and drugs and alcohol and like, like all sorts of other things. Like it, it still does it in a way that's fairly balanced. Um, which means that it's, and it still has a female protagonist that like kicks ass and like doesn't take shit and like, um, you know, speaks for herself and whatever and is, you know, while being kind of a, a not great person is still kind of a better role model than whatever the hell is going on over there. Yeah. Well, sometimes, and like sometimes just having those multidimensional characters and having the discussion is just, it's easier than tackling like nonsense that of a character that's just propelling. I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather just have discussions about the other subject matter than, I mean. I really age, like Elfo. Age depending. What do you really like? Elfo is one of the characters in Disenchanted. He's the elf. It, it just cracks me up. <laughs> so basically it's, it's this girl who's a princess and her two best friends are a demon named Lucy. Uh, and, I'm already into this show. And a, so a, an elf. And, and in this show, elves are like basically like Keebler elves, like little miniature green guys. Um, and an elf named Elfo. Um, and elves live in the, like a magical candy land. And that's what they do all day is they make and eat candy. Um, so like he comes from a whole world where like bad things don't exist. And then her other friend is Lucy. So it's literally like the, so the devil and the angel. Yeah, it's the devil and the angel on the shoulder thing. Um, but done in a really interesting way and like Lucy's constantly trying to corrupt Elfo with a fair bit of success because Elfo <laughs> doesn't even know anything of, like he doesn't even realize he's doing anything wrong it's a really good yeah it's, it's well done oh and it's Matt Groening so of course there's like there's the good like storyline you can fall between episodes but even like in and of their own episodes are fine as a single unit so mm -hmm. it's it's good it's only 10 episodes too I believe so we went through it pretty quick. Oh, I'm sad to hear that. Yeah. I think I'm on like six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're long though. I mean, they're like 40 minutes. They're not. Yeah. No, they they're, are. They're not, yeah. they're not a 15 minute show. Right. They're not your typical like cartoon and it's over. Yeah. All good recommendations. I'm excited. <laughs> Maybe I'll get work done today. Maybe I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go think about naps for a bit. <clears throat> your favorite one. Or I'm actually going to grab a nap on the dock when we finish this call. Recreate your favorite nap. <laughs> create a new one, yeah. Create some memories. That's what we do here. That's what we're all about. Obviously, because it, because Allison keeps finding people who, who have memories of our show. Yeah, it's like, they've over, it's like they're overhearing our coffee shop conversation and bringing it up to me later, and I didn't realize they were in the coffee shop. <laughs> you were there? It's like, oh, you were sitting yeah. next to us the whole time? I hope I didn't say anything embarrassing. Anything yeah. I hope I didn't talk about you. <laughs> or when they bring up the topic and I already have forgotten what the topic was. Which is probably the most likely, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what's that? Is that a thing? A language, you say? <laughs> Esperanto. Esperanto. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, do you have big weekend plans? What's a weekend? No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.